Joshua trees are just a symbol of what my home looks like. They take hundreds of years to get to the size that they are. Seeing them burnt is beautiful and devastating. I've had to evacuate my crew because the fire got too close before. To get chased out like that is discouraging, extremely discouraging, but that doesn't mean that we're gonna give up. Thanks for coming out. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be planting Joshua trees within the most badly affected areas of the fire with the hopes that those Joshua trees will grow up, they'll start producing seed, and then they'll start kind of reforesting the SEMA dome naturally. So planning for the restoration started basically while the dome fire was still going on. I was driving around doing a burn severity assessment, just thinking to myself like, gosh, what do I do? It's one of the densest, largest Joshua tree forests in the world, and I'm just one person. If this place burns again, you know, that's gonna set us back. Red brome is pretty much, I would say, the number one immediate threat to our project and to the Joshua tree forest up here. One of the reasons why the dome fire was so bad, it kind of forms a continuous layer of fuel, which when you get a wildfire, will carry that fire from one shrub to another. We're planting about 1,000 trees, and then we'll be planting 1,000 more each year for the next three years, 4,000 total. The Joshua tree is an iconic plant, much like the California redwood. The plant has a lot of intrinsic beauty, but it also has a lot of ecological importance. It's associated with a wide diversity of other plant species, as well as animal species. My name's Bruce Baldwin, and I'm a professor in the Department of Integrative Biology here at Berkeley. And I also am the curator of the Jepson Herbarium, which is focused on the native flora of California. Desert plants are recognized as being an ecologically extreme habitat, but they can be vulnerable to climate change in the sense that they can often be close to their ecological tolerance limits. Additional climate change in a direction of more extreme heat and drought could potentially be catastrophic for some plants. This one has a very tough road ahead of it. I think it's our obligation to give them a head start. In 2019, I started working on a petition to the California Fish and Game Commission seeking protection of the Western Joshua tree. In 2022, the commission will decide whether the species warrants permanent protection under the law as a threatened species. If it does so, it will be the first species in California protected by law due to the threats of climate change. Joshua Tree National Park has actually done quite a bit of work for us up here. They were able to get about 90% success rate. And we're hoping that the cages can keep jackrabbits and other would-be herbivores out. So we're hoping for 90%, but anywhere upwards of 50 is actually probably is good. Oh my gosh, so I have been emailing volunteers for like the last two months. And so it is so cool to see everybody here. It's finally all coming to fruition and it's been really awesome. The way this crew wound up on this project, originally this crew was an LGBTQ plus forestry crew that was slated to do forestry work out at Sequoia Kings Canyon National Park. Their whole project was to build a fire break out there and literally the week of their orientation, the park caught fire. I came out here today to help with the restoration project because this is a really important place to me. I've been camping here for 
close to 30 years, which is longer than any of the houses I've ever lived in in my life. This place is home. Because there's so much energy going into this and so many people from different walks of life coming together to do this, today I'm choosing to feel optimistic. It's about 1.3 million trees lost in the fire. You can put the plant in there. So that's uh, 1.3 million minus one. <laughs> Upwards of 90% of Joshua trees can die post-fire, but a small percentage, if the conditions are right, can sprout from the roots of a Joshua tree. And right here in front of us, a tree that appears dead, and most of them around us are dead, but this one is sprouting. This little growth came up since the fire last year. Seeing that gives me hope. It's a reminder that as catastrophic as the impacts on this planet can be, and how much we need to protect them, they have their own resiliency and their own determination to survive, and this one's trying to do that. This might sound melodramatic, but I really just want to be able to look the younger generation in the eyes in 50 years from now and be able to tell them that I did, I tried. Like, I did what I could. I, I did go out there and plant some trees. I don't know what the future holds in terms of climate change, but I want to be able to honestly tell the younger generation that I, I tried. Everyone so far is having a blast. You know, we're having a little setback with the weather here in a few days. Right now it's pretty cold. And then I think we're supposed to get rain all day tomorrow and then even a little bit of snow. Other than that, everything's great. You know, everyone's spirits are high. My spirit's high. So yeah, we're, we're doing good.